No, your story reminds me of something. I don't think I've ever mentioned this before. But something I was able to get away with Pensick probably well before the one you're talking about. This is like somewhere like Pensick 12 or oh, 14. Oh, yeah, way, way something, earlier. Something like that. But anyway, um, after my grandmother died, we had to sell their lake home, and the lake home had an old building that had a barn in it. And one of the things we found sitting up in the barn was a couple of old original sites, still sharp. And since I was going to Pensick that year, I thought this would make a great prop. <laughs> you know, just put up in front of my, t I actually duct taped the edge <laughs> because I didn't have the heart to, to take the edge off it otherwise. And that year, I don't remember exactly why, but I was camping with a Japanese household called the House of a Thai. Hmm. And I was sitting there having breakfast one morning, and it was kind of foggy. And we were right on the main path where everybody was heading out to the battlefield. And so these groups of, of fighters kept marching past. And I'm sitting there in the chair having my breakfast, watching them march, march off into the fog. And I remember thinking to myself, well, there goes another batch of poor souls off to their death. And I thought about this, and I looked at the scythe that's hanging in front of my tent, and this thought suddenly popped into my head. So I went back in, I put on my all black cloak with the red trim and the hood, and I put the scythe over my shoulder, <laughs> and the next time a group came walking along the, the roadway, I just quietly fell in step behind them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got almost <laughs> on the battlefield when somebody finally noticed. <laughs> and and uh, we got to the battlefield, and I just stood along the sidelines, and, and one of them turned to me and said, would you mind going standing over on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> So I went around and stood on the other side, and they said, could you go stand over there? I said, well, I was there. They told me to stand over here. <laughs> Finally, I climbed up on Iceland's hill and just stood there like this with the scythe and had to be there for like 15 to 20 minutes before some herald came running up to me and says, um, the king wants to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember who the king was at the time, uh, but uh, we had an interesting discussion. And uh, <laughs> you know, you're kind of bumming out the troops. <laughs> said, Look, it's authentic, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, and like for the next couple of years, at least once, I would do that. Um, I, I, there was one year, in fact, uh, I fell in with a, uh, a rather voluptuous young lady who was dressed in sort of a chainmail Valkyrie outfit. And she had th this notebook with a big quill pen. And we would walk down the line of fire going 21, 22, 23. She started taking down names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of our favorite bits was we would walk through a group of fighters, and I would announce in a loud voice, now remember, you get all the Vikings, I get all the rest. And people in Japanese outfits would jump up to, I'm a Viking! <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a great stick for a while. Eventually it kind of wore out, but I still got the sign. So. Very good. Oh, that's fantastic. On that note, I will bid you farewell and good evening. Thank you for the stories. Good night, Alice. Yes, I admit, that was me. Ha, ha, ha.